In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the user interface of Autodesk Maya and have a basic introduction to how to navigate the application for beginners. The first time you start up Autodesk Maya, you'll be greeted with the What's New highlight settings. We want to unclick Show This at Startup, and you can leave Highlight What's New checked for now. This is a personal preference, and then press OK. Now we are inside Autodesk Maya, and we can see all its buttons and menus. We're gonna go through each of these to give you a general overview of how the program works. One of the things we need to get used to in Maya is saving everything as a project. So we're gonna do that right from the beginning to not ignore it. First, go to File, Project Window. We don't have a project set yet, we just have the default project. So what we're going to do is click the New box. We'll type a name for our project. For this, I'll type Maya Intro. And then it'll save in your Documents folder under Maya Projects. Click Accept, and it will create all of these folders. We'll talk about these folders in future videos. It's always good practice to be working within a project. Another good idea is to turn on Autosave. If you go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, then if you go down to Files and Projects, you can click on Enable Autosave. So this is nice because it will automatically save your projects as Maya can tend to crash from time to time. Click Save. Now we have our first project open and we can see everything in Maya. I'm going to click on this cube up in the upper left. It places a cube in the center of our viewport. The viewport window, this gray large area in the center is the main place that we look at everything. I've put this cube here so we can see it and navigate our viewport and see things about it. The first thing we're gonna talk about in the user interface is the file menu. We have File, Edit, Create, Select, Modify. These, these are all very similar to most software that you'll use. Up in the top right, we have Workspaces. Right now, it will open up to Maya Classic, which shows an animation timeline on the bottom, shows some information on the right, our toolbar on the left, and then different shelves for selecting things on the top. We can switch our workspaces. We can go to Modeling Standard, which focuses on the modeling screen and drops the timeline. We can also go to Modeling Expert, which gives us even more space to model. We can go to Animation, which increases the timeline for animation and shows the graph. For now, we're going to go back and select Modeling Standard. This is a good balance as you're beginning the program. Let's take a look at the menus. First, we have the shelf. The shelf is where we have all of these icons, and it is different. We have a curved surfaces shelf, a poly modeling shelf, a sculpting shelf, a rigging shelf, an animation shelf, rendering, effects, and different things for motion graphics and the Arnold renderer. Notice that each shelf changes based on the context. Above these shelves, we have some options such as snapping and selecting. We also have some quick select render controls. And then of course we have our menu above that. For example, if I select create, and then I go to polygon primitives, I see the same options that I have in my shelf. And if I click on cylinder, it automatically inserts a cylinder into my scene. But if I go to create polygon primitives cylinder, and then I click on this box right here, it gives me options. Then I can change how my cylinder will go in. I can change the height and the radius to larger numbers and click apply or create, and it'll give me this new cylinder. So in Maya, there's always ways to do things quickly or to do things with more options and be more precise. I'm going to press delete on my keyboard to delete those two cylinders I created. Now let's talk about the toolbar in Maya. The toolbar is located in the left. We have an arrow tool, a lasso tool, a paint select tool, a move tool, a rotate tool, and a scale tool. The four tools we will use the most are select, move, rotate, and scale. These each have their own keyboard shortcuts. Q is the arrow or select tool. Then if we press W, it is the translate or transform tool. E is the rotate tool and R is the scale tool. Let's see what happens if we do these on an object. If I press Q to get the arrow and I select this box, now I have it selected. If I press W now for the move tool, I now see these axes. We have the green axis, which represents the Y. Red is X and blue is Z. If I move it up, suddenly this axis is yellow. The selected axis displays as yellow. I can move it this direction, 
or I can move it in the Z direction. Notice how the color changes as I select different ones. I can also move it within plane on an axis. Notice that this is now yellow in my selection. In the center, we can select and we move it in all directions. Generally, this is not a good idea because it's hard to tell where one is moving the object. We could be moving it up, down, and back in space at the same time. Let's see how this works with rotate. Again, the keyboard shortcut for rotate is E. If I press E, I am now presented with the rotate options. These colors automatically correspond to the different axes, but now we have one more color on the outside. This is not the one we have selected. This rotates the object within plane. So I'm going to rotate and notice that it spins within the plane. This can be useful and sometimes it can be confusing. Now watch if I grab this one, it will rotate within that axis. Or if I grab this one, it rotates in that axis of the cube. So these are all very helpful. And then lastly, we have R for the scale tool. Once again, we can scale in different directions of the axes. We can scale towards us, and then we can scale two at one time along a plane. If we grab the middle one, this middle light blue one in the middle, then it scales in all directions at the same time. So these are the most important tools for manipulating our simple polygons. The Q for selection, W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. But how do we move around our object? That means we have to be able to navigate our camera. How can we navigate our camera? When you're using Autodesk Maya, it is highly recommended that you use a three button mouse. Along with the three button mouse, we'll use a modifier key. If you're on Windows, it will be the Alt key. If you're on Mac, it will be the Option key. So press or hold the Alt or Option key, and then your left mouse button, and you will orbit around the object. You see here, I can orbit around and move my camera to the top and bottom and around the object. If I hold the Alt or Option key and the middle mouse button, I now pan back and forth. If I hold Alt or Option and the right mouse button, if I move back and forth to the right and left, I zoom in and out. I can also roll the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Either one works, it's up to your preference. By using these modifier keys, Option, Alt, Orbit, and Pan, I can easily move to where I need to work on my object. And then I can use these tools independently and switch between them by pressing the keyboard shortcuts. What if I get my object very far out of the way and I can't really see where it is and I've, I've zoomed it up, panned it over, and I don't know where it is? An easy way to find the object that you've selected is to press the F key to frame it in the viewport. This is very convenient so when you're working on an object, you always zoom directly towards it. So now, no matter what happens, I still have it in the viewport. I can press F to bring it back. But sometimes we don't want to have this object selected. If we have many objects, and I want to be orbiting around another object, now I can't orbit around the one that I've selected because I'm still framing this object. If that happens, press A, and it'll switch back to all objects. Now I can orbit around all the objects. And then if I select the second one and press F, now it is the framed object and I can orbit around it. If I want to orbit around everything, I press A again, and now I orbit around everything. And if I want to switch which object is framed, I select this object and press F. And now this is in frame. So we always have control in Maya about how we want to move around in space. Right below the tools, we have more camera controls. We have controls that show the different views of the cameras. If I click this top button, nothing happens because this shows the perspective view. The perspective view is the default view in Maya. If I click this panel with four, I get four views. This gives us three orthographic views, the top, front, and side. It's important to know the difference between orthographic views and perspective views. It's a little hard to see here because these objects are tilted. So I'm going to click here and delete them and then bring in a new cube. I'll press the R key to scale it in all directions. And now it should be very obvious what the difference between orthographic and perspective views are. We can move these independently by holding the Option or Alt key in the middle mouse button to pan. We can also select in any of them to be able to scale our object. This is a very convenient way to model. 
If I press the spacebar hovering above any of these viewports, I go into it. I can go back by clicking the boxes on the left or by pressing the spacebar. If I'm in this view and I tap the spacebar, I come to this view. If I want to go to the side view, I can tap the spacebar, and now I'm in the side view, and I can manipulate the object, tap the spacebar, go back to the perspective view. Notice that I'm not clicking the mouse button. I want to click the spacebar. If I click the mouse button, I lose my selection. Right now, it's not a big deal because I only have one thing to select, but if you spent time in the side view making a precise selection, and then you want to go to the front view, and you click in it, suddenly you lose your selection. So a better way to do it is just click the space bar, and then we can move from view to view and keep our selection. Right below the four squares is a default setup that has side-by-side -side views. Right above these, notice that we have individual controls for each of our views. And then above that, we have panels, and we can go to saved layouts. There are many different layouts saved for general workflows that people do often, and you can use these to go to what you want very quickly. I'm gonna go back to single perspective view. When we're in single perspective view, we have a couple different options to see our objects. We can look at our objects in wireframe by pressing four. We can also select it in the menu up at the top here. If we want to see our objects shaded, we can press five. If we want to see them with textures, we can press six. Here I have no textures. And if we have put lights in our scene, we can press seven. We don't have any lights in our scene, so now it's showing everything as dark black because there are no lights. To go back to shaded with the default lighting, press five, and we move back. You can also toggle these views right at the top here. Lastly, over on the left is the outliner. The outliner shows us everything that's in our scene. If I have multiple objects in my scene, you'll see that I have two of them. I can make another object and have them in my scene as well. To duplicate objects, you can select them and press Control or Command D. If I have all of these selected with the shift key and I press command D or control D, then I move them to the side, you'll see that I have six objects. Let's talk about groups and parenting. Groups is a common way to put things together in software. You use them in your file manager all the time. Putting something in a folder is a way of grouping it. Here we can select multiple objects, then we can press control G or command G on a Mac to group them. If we look over in our outliner, you can see group one. I can double click this to rename it. If I press E to rotate this group, notice that they all rotate. This is a convenient way to organize your model and to do things to an entire group of objects at the same time. But do note, if I don't have the group selected and then I shift click each of these objects and then I rotate them, they don't rotate as a group. It's very important that you select the group and then you can rotate them as a group. Sometimes this can be confusing. In Maya, in addition to groups, we also have something called parenting. In the outliner, I have pcube one, two, and three. We can parent these by selecting one, then holding shift, selecting the second, and pressing P. Now, if I click this plus mark, cube two is inside cube three. I can then select cube three, hold shift, click cube one, and press P. And now I have a hierarchy of three cubes. I can use the up and down arrows to move from one to the next in my hierarchy. Let's press E for rotate. If I rotate this cube in the lower hierarchy, it rotates by itself. If I go up in the hierarchy and rotate it, they both rotate together. And then at the top parent level, it will rotate them all. Generally, we'll use groups rather than parenting, but these are two ways that you can organize your model in the outliner. I'll press Q to get back to the arrow tool, then I'll press delete to delete those cubes, and then I will also delete these. Let's put in a new cube, press F to frame it, and now it's on our screen. Over in the right, we have a modeling toolkit and an attribute editor. If I click on the attribute editor, I get all this information about my cubes. I can rename my cube in the outliner, to my cube, and you'll notice that now I have my cube and then my cube shape. If I click on poly cube, it gives us information about this cube. I can change its height and width. Now my cube is much larger. And notice these numbers, it says 14.714. In Maya, the default unit is centimeters. So if you're trying to make something match real world scale, use these numbers as centimeters. We can also add subdivisions to our cube. 
We'll talk more about subdivisions when we start modeling, but I can add them to the height, the width, and the depth. And now my cube is chopped up more. Now let's talk about the different modes in Maya. We have three modes. We have group mode, object mode, and component mode. You can select them up at the top here. Here is object mode. This is group mode. And then this is component mode. We can also use our keyboard to select them. F8 is object mode. F9 is a subset of component mode called vertex mode. F10 is a subset of component mode called edge mode. And F11 is a subset of component mode for faces. Let's press F8 again. Now we're in object mode. You always know you're in object mode because it is green outline around the objects. Then we have F9 through F11 to switch to the different component modes. This is a very fast way to get in between the different modes. You can also right click on an object when it's selected, hold down, and this is the marking menu. Here we have many ways to select different things. I can select edge mode, face mode, vertex, or object mode. Let's go to edge mode. Then if I wanna go back to object mode, I can either press F8 or I can right click and hold and go back to object mode. The marking menu changes upon context. For example, right now I have an object selected. If I hold the shift key and then right click, I get these tools because I have an object selected. Let's watch what happens if I don't have an object selected. I hold the shift key and then right click. Now I get a creation menu. So I can quickly create a cylinder, press W, move it to the side, and now I have a cylinder. Notice that this cylinder did not come in as the default size. That's because earlier we modified the cylinder command. So if we go to the create menu, then we go polygon primitives, then cylinder, and we go to this little box, we can edit and then reset the settings. We can do this for any tool and it's important to be able to do in case you make something special for your tool and then you want to go back to the default settings. So that's in the edit menu of the tool. Let's talk a little bit more about these different modes. All of our objects are made up of three things. They're made up of vertexes, which are these little points. They're made up of edges, which are the lines in between the vertexes. And they're made up of faces, which are the faces that are contained by the edges. This is called polygon modeling. And so we need to get used to using these things. Remember in all digital tools, you need to select something to do anything to it. So we need to select it to affect it. So if we want to change a face, we need to select that face. If we want to change an edge, we need to select that edge. There are many different ways to select things. If I double click right here, it will select all the faces on the object. I can also select a range of faces. What if I wanna select these four? Well, I can select this one, move my mouse button to the top, hold the shift key and double click. Now it's selected these. What if I wanted to select all the faces around in a ring. I can do that by selecting one, moving to the next one in the direction I wanna select, hold the shift key and double click. Now I've selected a ring of faces. I can do this in another direction by clicking here, holding shift, then double clicking. Now it goes around in a circle. Let's move to edge mode to see how that works. I can also select an edge, then hold my mouse here, hold shift, double click, and now I have a range of edges. I can also just double click on an edge and it automatically selects that ring going around and then I can move it and adjust it. I can even press R to then scale that edge. I can scale it in one direction or I can scale it in all directions. That's up to you. I can press Z to go backwards and undo what I've done. This also works with vertexes. Remember F9 is quickly goes to the vertex menu or I can hold and select vertex right here. If I double click on one vertex, it selects all of them. If I select this vertex and then hold shift and select the top one, it selects these vertices in a row. I can also select an entire ring of vertices. If I click here and then double click, it will select all the vertices in that row. And then of course I can move them around. If I wanna move all of them up, I can do this. Another great way to select things is to hold the tab key. We can then paint our selection. So we can hold tab and then with the left mouse button, I can paint in my selection. So this is a nice way to be able to select things as well. We can also convert a selection. So if we go up to the select menu, 
and select convert selection, we can go to vertices. So that makes that selection go to vertices. We can also press control or command plus the function key. If I want it to be edges, I can hold command or control and press F10. We can also make this manipulator tool larger or smaller by pressing the plus or minus buttons. Plus makes it larger, minus makes it smaller. This is especially helpful when we have E selected and we want to rotate much slower and have a larger handle to rotate. We can also rotate in increments by pressing the J key. Often people will start to rotate, then hold J and they'll say, it's not snapping. You need to press and hold J first, then you'll see that it rotates and snaps in 15 degree increments. So this can be confusing at first. So again, hold J first, then rotate and it will snap in increments. We can also move our point of rotation around by tapping the D key, moving it, and then tapping D again. You can also do this by holding D, moving into position, and then letting go of D. Either way works. We can also snap this point to different pieces. If I hold D, then I hold V, I can move this and it'll snap to vertices. So if I want to manipulate this from this corner and rotate the cube on that corner, I can snap it to that vertex. I can also move this and snap it to the grid. For example, if I hold down D, then I hold down X, I can move this and it'll snap to the grid. Now if I rotate, it's going to rotate around that grid piece. So this can be very convenient for moving objects around. For example, if I have two objects and I want to snap these together on these corners, I can hold D and then hold V, move this to this corner. Then I can move this, first press V, move, and then I'll snap it right to this point. We can also do this with these menus at the top with the magnets, they'll do the different things. And if you hover, it will show you what it does. This is snap to points, which I just did with keyboard shortcuts. So this is a great way to move objects around and have them attach exactly where you want them. So this is a basic overview of the user interface of Maya and simple selection with polygons. We will now learn about simple manipulation of those polygons to begin modeling.